Well, hi everybody, I'm Sandy Alnock. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today I'll be watercoloring on black paper with some very special shimmery paints that I think you're going to enjoy. And first I wanted to show you, however, the new Misty, the most incredible stamp tool invented. I've had several of these in the past and Ileana, bless her heart, sent me one of the new ones so I could review it for you and show you what the differences are between the old ones and the new ones. First off, this one comes in lovely packaging now and it comes in this box that has good sturdy cardboard on the outside as well as an inner cardboard wrapper to keep it all good and safe as it travels through the mail. And it looks somewhat similar until you start looking at some details and the differences between this one and previous ones. It comes with two magnets and so the two magnets you want to keep apart because if you don't they will break each other. But if you turn them one direction, the two pieces magnetize toward each other. If you turn one the opposite direction, you have hours of endless ridiculous fun, which I had when I suddenly discovered magnets repel. I know I learned that in school, but it was just fun as a grown up to just sit here and play with my silly magnets. So give them to one of your children to have goofy fun with, but not really small children. You don't want them to put that in their mouth. Anyway, let's get back to the Misty. And you'll notice when you put a piece of paper in here, there are no pink lines now. These are laser etched into the surface of the plexiglass, or whatever this stuff is called. I think it's plexiglass. Whereas before they were silk screened on and you had to put a piece of uh, plastic over top of it to protect it, that sort of thing. So these are two of the older versions, but the new one has these just etched lines, which means you're not looking through pink lines anymore to see them on your project and you can see your project through very well and it has little pads of paper that you can use inside the misty as well as the black pad some of the black pads need like a sixteenth of an inch cut off of them so you want to make sure if it doesn't fit that's okay just slice off a little teeny tiny bit and the hinges are also a little bit smaller than they were the there's a made in china sticker on it now but these are still the final assembly is still done in the united states just some of the manufacturing is done overseas and i am going to be stamping some some items in a row a bunch of stamps in a row and i want to show you just one really simple way you can use this tool to stamp a, a repeated image to make a pattern out of it in some way now one of the best things about the Misty, I'm a terrible stamper and you can see there's an area I missed. All I have to do is re-ink it and place it right back down because my paper is in the same place because of the magnets. And it, it saved my bacon so many times, let me tell you. And I'm looking at the bottom, there's a ruler across the bottom, sorry I'm off camera there, but I didn't have time to refilm this section. And what I'm doing is lining up, I figured out it was a little over two inches. So if I slide my paper two inches over and then I'm double checking to make sure it, it lines up the way I want it to if, the, if I bring those, those mittens back down. And then I'm going to mark on my a little paper pad with a pencil so I know exactly how far to go. So I'll stamp these. I had to stamp this one twice as well to get it right. And then I slide it over another two inches and that will give me my final impression so I can have the rest of the mittens continue across. Now this is taking it outside the bounds of the misty. so when I do my stamping I'll have to be careful to be certain that I don't press on the right hand side or else I'll get an impression where the edge of the tool is. So I'm just going to press very lightly right where the stamped image is and not on the right hand side. So now I'll ink that one up and get it ready to go. I'm actually using watercolor cardstock because I wanted to try these paints on white cardstock even if they're meant for dark cardstock but you could use a piece of typing paper for all your setup testing parts. So now I have a piece of black basil cardstock and I'm going to put some embossing de-static on it. Now there's a lot of de-static tools. Some people even use a dryer sheet or something made with like baby powder. Whatever you can use to try to keep that powder from sticking in places where you don't want it to stick. Because I'm stamping in Versamark ink and I want the embossing powder only to stick to the Versamark. I don't want it to stick anywhere else. But you can see I can now line this piece of paper up with my marks that are on here. And since I can't see my, my Versamark stamping very well, 
these guides make it really easy. You could make a whole bunch of these really quickly just following those little guidelines. So that powder also will rub off very easily after I get all my embossing done. So I'm taking my embossing powder, running it across here, and then I'll tap off the excess and heat set it with my Wagner heat gun. I taped it down because I did get some warping with this. Now, depending on the cardstock that you are using, you may get more or less warping. So you want to try it out and see how this works before you get too crazy about it. And if you don't have these paints, you're going to be able to use pencils with it. Pencils won't add any additional warping to it. But I'm just adding the other images in this Clearly Besotted stamp set. I'm not sure I've even mentioned that this is by Clearly Besotted. And I'm uh, just putting my embossing powder on these excess parts, all the little designs on the mittens. And then we'll heat set them as well. And then I'll just take a clean paper towel and rub off that excess powder. Now there's another set by Clearly Besotted that I wanted to use the same technique for, so that's my practice paper. And this one has a bunch of ornaments on it and some fun sentiments. And I wanted a whole row of the ornaments, so I'm going to do the same thing. I can just keep sliding my paper up until I, I make those little pencil lines, put my embossing powder on it, and then I'll have a beautiful row of ornaments. So let's get to the painting part now. These are the paints, they're by Fine Tech, and I've showed you before a set of six gold paints. There's different kinds of golds, but these are a little bit different. You can see on the black paper that they actually have more color to them than you would suspect from looking at the pans. So I made myself a little cheat sheet to put into my little container here, so I always know which colors are which, because when you look at the little pans, you would never know in a million years that some of those colors are what they are. So that color I'm using right there is green, believe it or not. And you don't know that until you put it on the black paper. With any black cardstock, these are not watercolor papers, so they're not made to deal with water. They're not made to withstand having water pooling on the surface. So you want to use as small an amount of water as you can in order to get the color to move. And you don't want to use very large areas or large images to color. That's why these little mittens from Clearly Besotted and the little ornaments are going to be perfect for this because they are so small. And that's the, the perfect kind of thing to use for this. These would also be beautiful paints to do hand lettering on maybe black envelopes for the holidays because the colors show up just beautifully. So I'm just filling in all of the little spots and trying to get enough of the color and enough water on there to get the color to fill in but without doing too much pooling and puddling so that I can limit some of the the warping that I'll get on the paper and I did actually after it was all dry I set them under a book to let them sit there overnight and really flatten out well. I used a Signo pen to add some little strings to my mittens and then I also wanted to cover a few spots where if, if you're like me and you try to emboss with white you end up with little tiny bits of powder here and there. I just added more dots so it looked intentional. And that is just a little cheat to help you if you have issues with embossing like I do. Now I wanted to do lines. You could use the grid paper from the Misty to do your lines. There is a stamp in the set that has a little line, but I thought it would be a little easier to do a whole bunch of parallel ones by using this crazy ruler. And this is one that I got when I used to sail. Um, yes, on a sailboat. I was a sailor. And we would use this in our with the maps and things of the water because you needed to have some parallel lines. So here you use the ruler with the little roller at the bottom to just slide down and get all of your lines parallel right across the entire card. And so this is just one of those little tools that I've pulled out from a whole nother area <laughs> to try to use in my crafting, but it really does help. And now I'm just gonna fill in all of the areas on the ornaments same as I did with the other one, with just a paintbrush, and you can use any kind of paintbrush. I use the silver black velvet brushes. These brushes end up with such a fine point, I can get it into some of those really tiny areas. All the supplies, by the way, are listed in the description down below. Now here's my test, painting all of this on that white cardstock. It's watercolor cardstock, and I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you paint these. You 
don't get much color when you're looking straight on at all because these are intended to be on darks. So other than the reds and some of those gold and brass types of colors, you, you get a shimmer. You definitely get a mother of pearl shimmer, but not a whole lot. But what I did find that works well is to color the image either with some sort of water-based markers or some, some kind of paints. I'm using a Zig clean color pen here and then go over it with some of the watercolor. And I'm using the pink color over the red and I used the blue over the blue and then just painted it on with a brush. And that will mix it in with the color that's there and give you a sort of a shimmer. It's not as shiny as it is on the black, but it still looks really cool. And look at how beautiful this came out. I layered the sentiment onto another piece of black cardstock and popped both that and the panel with the images on it. And I just love how shiny and beautiful it came out. And when you tip it in the light, you really get that, that sense of the shine. And the sentiments in this set are hilarious. I only used the Merry Christmas, but I wanted you to see them because they're really funny. I'm trying to get into the Christmas spirit, but I lost my bottle opener. So cute. And here are the mittens as well. And I think they, they both came out great with just the panel popped on top. Gives the card a little bit of extra heft without adding crazy design to it and allows the simplicity of the shiny color to really be the hero of the card. So here are a couple other videos if you're interested in going seeing some more and please feel free to visit my blog in the description down below. There are links to that and all of the other supplies in this video. Make sure you subscribe so you can get more videos from me and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye bye.